There are some discoveries that scientists wish they had never made. The DNA results from Peru's 3,000-year-old elongated skulls are one of them. What began as a simple investigation into an ancient cultural practice has spiraled into a controversy that challenges everything we thought we knew about human history. The genetic code extracted from the Paracas people contains anomalies that have sent shockwaves through the scientific community. These results don't just suggest a new chapter in our understanding of the past, they suggest something far more unsettling about ancient civilizations, and perhaps even who we are. In 1928, Peruvian archaeologist Julio Tello made a discovery on the arid Paracas Peninsula that would haunt researchers for nearly a century. Beneath the scorching desert surface, his team found a labyrinth of deep, precisely carved subterranean chambers. These were not simple graves, they were elaborate stone-lined tombs built to last an eternity. Inside, arranged with chilling, deliberate care, lay over 300 mummified bodies. But these were not ordinary human remains. The first thing that struck the team was the skulls, unnervingly stretched and elongated, some reaching almost impossible lengths that challenged the very definition of normal human anatomy. The scene inside the tombs deepened the mystery. Each skull had been wrapped in exquisite textiles showing incredible craftsmanship. The bodies weren't buried with crude tools. They were interred with ceremonial blades made of obsidian and adorned with intricate jewelry of gold and shell. This was clearly the final resting place of the elite. Radiocarbon dating pushed the timeline back dramatically. The burials dated to between 2,800 and 3,000 years ago, placing them around 800 to 1,000 BCE. This means these people belong to the Paracas civilization, a culture so ancient it predates the mighty Inca Empire by more than 2,000 years. But for all their advanced artistry and engineering, their legacy was defined by one thing, those bizarre elongated heads. The question haunted everyone. Were they simply the result of an ancient headbinding practice, or did this unsettling shape reveal something far more profound? The skulls were not just long, their very structure appeared different in ways that defied easy explanation. The cranial volume of some skulls was reportedly up to 25% larger than that of a normal human skull. Even more stunning, they were said to be up to 60% heavier. This is critical. Artificial cranial deformation can change the shape of a skull, but it cannot increase its volume or mass. The skull is simply reshaped, not enlarged. The mystery grew when scientists examined the skulls more closely. Many were missing a key feature of the normal human cranium, the sagittal suture. This connective tissue runs along the top of the skull, separating two bone plates. In normal humans, these plates fuse during childhood. But in many Paracas skulls, there was no sign a suture had ever existed, just a single solid bone plate. While this can occur as a rare birth defect, for it to appear consistently in an entire elite population was statistically baffling. It suggested a genetic trait, a shared lineage that set them apart from everyone else. Modern CT scans revealed internal bone structure that looked surprisingly uniform, as if the bone had naturally grown into its elongated form rather than being warped by external pressure. The bone was described as denser and more robust than expected. This was the point where the simple explanation of head binding began to fall apart. What if these individuals were born different? To solve the mystery, researchers needed to examine DNA. Analyzing 3,000-year-old genetic material is incredibly difficult, but the harsh, dry desert climate of Paracas acted like a natural preservative, perfectly maintaining tiny fragments of organic material. Researchers collected samples from bone powder, hair strands, preserved skin tissue, and teeth. Working in sterile, clean room conditions to prevent contamination, they specifically targeted mitochondrial DNA, genetic material passed down exclusively from mother to child. This type of DNA is resilient and perfect for tracing ancient maternal lineages. To ensure integrity, samples were sent to multiple independent laboratories. The scientific community expected a clear conclusion linking the skulls to known Native American haplogroups, the genetic families that all indigenous peoples of the Americas belong to. Instead, what came back was bewildering. According to some researchers involved in the early testing, the mitochondrial DNA showed unusual mutations, and most shockingly, ancestry that had no business being in Peru 3,000 years ago. Scientists had expected links to local South American tribes, descendants of people who crossed the Bering Strait land bridge from Asia some 15,000 years ago. But those expected genetic connections were largely absent. Instead, the data revealed haplogroups commonly associated with populations thousands of miles away, genetic signatures tracing back to regions in Europe and the Middle East, including areas around the Black Sea, the Caucasus Mountains, and even ancient Mesopotamia. Think about that. 3,000-year-old skulls buried on the coast of Peru carrying genetic signatures linking them to the Old World thousands of years before Columbus. How did that genetic material travel across entire continents and oceans? This wasn't just a minor anomaly. 
It was a fundamental contradiction of everything we thought we knew about ancient human migration and the peopling of the Americas. The DNA results confirm something incredible. The Paracas elite were genetically distinct from their neighbors and potentially connected to populations thousands of miles away. This finding tears a hole in the conventional history of the Americas. If transoceanic contact happened so long ago, it forces us to ask, were these people just distant travelers, or were they the last living remnants of a lost global civilization? This is the heart of diffusionism. A controversial theory suggesting that major ancient civilizations inherited their knowledge from a single powerful mother culture that existed in the deep past and was catastrophically wiped from the earth. The Paracas evidence, with its non-Andean lineage, advanced textiles, and unique skull physiology, provides fuel for this radical idea. This is where legends of Atlantis enter the story. According to these narratives, an advanced civilization was destroyed by a massive catastrophic event. The few survivors scattered across the earth, becoming founding elite bloodlines in distant regions like Egypt, Samaria, and Peru. In this narrative, the Paracas elite, with their foreign DNA, become living evidence of this ancient migration. They weren't just new arrivals. They were custodians of forgotten wisdom from a sunken motherland. This also provides a dramatic reinterpretation of head elongation. The practice wasn't just a status symbol. It was a deliberate attempt to emulate the naturally elongated craniums of their godlike ancestors. The Paracas elite were visually marking themselves as true descendants of this powerful forgotten race. Their sophisticated textiles, astronomical knowledge, and advanced burial practices are no longer seen as local inventions, but as scattered remnants of a superior lost science, the last vestiges of a truly global ancient connection. This unsettling proposition, that the Paracas are echoes of a civilization erased from our history, drives us into modern-day controversy and allegations that mainstream scientists are suppressing evidence. Mainstream anthropologists maintain that cranial deformation explains the skull shapes, and that genetic anomalies don't necessarily point to lost civilizations, perhaps instead to previously unknown migration patterns or isolated populations with unique genetic characteristics. Yet questions persist. Why were full DNA results never published in peer-reviewed journals? Why do some samples remain untested? Why has access to certain specimens been restricted? Some researchers claim they've been blocked from further testing, Others suggest the implications are too controversial for mainstream science to accept. The actions of some institutions have only fueled speculation, leaving us with a mystery that refuses to be neatly solved. The truth may lie somewhere between conventional archaeology and alternative theories, perhaps representing an ancient migration event we haven't yet understood, or evidence of far more extensive ancient contact between distant civilizations than previously believed. Also, what do you think is the true origin of the Paracas people? Do share your thoughts in the comments below. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more answers to history's greatest mysteries.